Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be going through this setup of this traveler's notebook that I'm using for homeschooling. I will link the previous video that I did in the description because if you've seen that you'll know that this is a completely different size. Previously, like about a month ago, uh, when we started homeschooling, I was using just a standard standard size, narrow size, whatever you want to call it. I was using that size and I had spent a lot of time setting up that traveler's notebook system. And after one day of official homeschooling, I realized that this size was just not going to work for me. So what I have here is an A5 size. This is a chic sparrow. It's in the Maverick leather and it is deluxe. So it has the stitching with pockets on the inside and a pen loop and I have an unboxing of this I'll link it below as well but I mentioned in that video that the pen loop was really stiff and I have since been working on it um, every time I open this up I just kind of give it a little squeeze and it has started laying much closer to the edge it was just sticking way out here and I've got a lot of wrinkles in it now just from bending it to the side. So this leather just takes a little bit more work, um, you know, because this is basically the thickest leather that you're probably going to get in a traveler's notebook, but it's still very much worth it to me. Uh, I have... Well, the reason that I even have this size is because I ended up getting this Hobonichi Cousin Avec Planner. And I basically switched sizes because these were just way too small for me. And I realized I was having to like add more inserts. You know, I realized I was missing like space for a daily page and I was really wanting that and I didn't want to have to add another insert to my setup because this is a monthly, this is just from Michaels. It has a monthly spread and then some grid paper at, between each month and I was gonna use this as like a scrapbook to put in ticket stubs and photos of us attending events and activities. And then this is a weekly, weekly layout and this is from Paper Penguin Co. on Etsy and I, I was attracted to this because this is the same layout as a Hobonichi Weeks and I love that for just everyday planning but for homeschooling that it's just another beast right so I just knew after that first day this was not gonna work out for what I needed there just basically wasn't enough space in each one of these days for me to document stuff and then I just didn't like having this big open space that I needed to figure out what to do with. So I kind of scrapped that, ordered this out of frustration, and it has been amazing. It, it's been everything I didn't even know I needed. Um, and just really quickly, the setup is kind of whatever. It, it's subject to change. I basically have a an A5 Chic Sparrow dashboard here and then just like another one right here. This is a dot grid Milico notebook. I just got like a three pack off Amazon, like back when I was bullet journaling um, before I got really into traveler's notebooks. Um, so I have this left over and I stuck it in here um, just for extra space because there's basically no extra pages in a in this Hobonichi. So I have this here in case I need brainstorming space and to just put maybe a collections or I haven't decided yet. I'm mostly just interested in this at the moment. So that's that. Around the Hobonichi, I actually have this clear cover and it, it's amazing. I, I really, really love it. It it's actually a Midori MD uh, notebook cover. And this, that's it right there. This was like the belly band on, on it. And um, it the dimensions of the Hobonichi Cousin looked really similar to the Midori MD notebook. And so I went ahead and just took a chance and ordered it. 
ordered the cover and it fits beautifully on this. So I'm really happy because I do tuck the back page or the back cover into the secretarial pocket just because I don't want to deal with uh, the strings pulling on the cover at all or just messing with the spine. So I'm really loving having it this way right now. It's nice and sturdy. Um, it doesn't slip out. So I'm good with that. So as far as the Hobonichi goes, there are a lot of videos out there that show the layout of this pretty in depth, but just in case someone's not familiar with it, I'm going to run through really quickly how this is laid out. So you get three years at a glance right here. The next page, you get these four pages of like future planning, right? So this goes from July 2018 to June of 2019. This is the AVEC. So that just means this is the uh, second book of the year. So the year is split into do two different books. So you get one for the first half and one for the second half, which is this. So after the four pages of, you know, for future planning, it goes right into the months. So this starts June of 2018 and goes to January of 2019. Right after the monthly spreads, it goes right into the weekly spreads. So this is a vertical layout. And I've this is my first time using a vertical layout. I was really kind of not excited about it, but I've never really used it. So I'm just open to it. But it starts June the 25th of 2018 and it goes all the way to January 6th of 2019. And after the weekly spreads, you get three pages of grid paper and then it goes right into the daily pages. And before each new month, you get this one page and it just has lines on it. And then you get the daily pages for that month, which will look like that. And so this is August. Um, so this is where I started. And what I'm thinking of, I obviously haven't committed to it yet because I'm using the sticky note, but the curriculum we're using is the good and the beautiful. So I thought on these beginning pages, I would write out every time we do we complete a lesson in this curriculum and I thought that would just be nice for me to be able to glance at and have all the information on this one page and encompassing that month and instead of having to flip through every single page and try to track down everything uh, that we completed so that is all of the daily pages and it goes all the way to, so what did it start at? So you get July the 1st of 2018, all the way to December 31st of 2018. And then you get just these two pages of grid paper. And then it goes into like all of the extras, but they're all in Japanese. Um, so it's just, it's just a few pages in the back. And I basically just ignore those. So for the monthlies, I attempted to use them. So I, I kind of set up August and what I initially decided was I was going to put activity times down here. So I thought I could reference this while I'm using my daily pages to actually document what happens, I would refer to this and, you know, see if there is anything that I needed to attend. This isn't helpful to me. I never once referenced this. All this stuff is basically in my Hobonichi Weeks that I use for day-to-day -day planning. So I found that I just really didn't need this. And so I tried using the weeklies. And I tried a lot of different things with this. Um, basically this, I'm not utilizing this either. And I tried a couple things like, I tried to do things across the top. I, I ignore the times on here. There's like times on the left sides and I just ignore those. So 
I kind of did a top section here for repetitive tasks that needed to be done, you know, like every day. And then in the middle, I just wanted to write out stuff that I would like to do that day, um, but don't necessarily um, occur every single day, which is silly because this is written like every single day. Um, and then I was going to have a bottom section here for our our state requires us to teach specific subjects so I kind of wrote them all down here and I was just going to kind of like check them off if they were covered on that particular day and I may come back to that and do that at some point because I, I do need to track that um, but we'll see uh, I don't know if I like this system yet and then I kind of moved that to the side and I thought I would just check mark each day across like this um Mm, I'm I'm just not using this I never referred to this when I was doing my daily pages so I'm just kind of skipping the weeks also for now um, so I really have this planner for the daily pages this is what I was sorely missing from my initial setup now I decided to just kind of dive into this. I didn't try to agonize over what my planning style was gonna be and how I was gonna organize the information. So when I started in here, my pages kind of just looked like this where I just kind of made dashes or bullet points and just literally, literally wrote everything down. Um, anything that I could remember that was that could be considered learning or educational I just wrote it all down and I figured as time went on I would decide what sections I would need and I was just gonna kind of go with the flow and just kind of wing it and dive right in so that is how everything started there is a section up at the top here and it's got little squares and you can kind of like use that for something um, so the repetitive tasks I tried to list up here and I would check them off as I did it. I dropped that quickly. I, I don't know. It just didn't really work for me. So what I also decided to do was since there is so much space on the daily pages where I was going to use this to scrapbook in my old monthly insert, I'm going to do that in the daily pages since they're is so much space in here so like we went to the library this day and so I took a couple of photos put them in here and that's that so I kind of incorporate the photos and um, ticket stubs and all that extra th stuff and I just work it into the daily pages and the daily pages are to document what actually happened so my plan was to use the months the monthly spreads and the weekly spreads for future planning and so on a particular day I would refer to my monthly or weeklies and kind of figure out what I wanted to do that day but what actually happened and what actually got accomplished is what would be written on my dailies so um, turns out I just don't need the monthly and weeklies at this point. Our schedule's pretty basic. You know, my kids are pretty young, so it's not like we have a lot that we need to plan or keep track of. As long as we can do a lesson pretty much daily from our curriculum, you know, we're, we're pretty good to go. Um, so I use it for scrapbooking and then I kind of you know as days went by started organizing the actual information so um, I have a section and I kind of just put that up at the top here um, for our curriculum and I'll write down what lesson we completed we only ever really do one per day because I just want my kids to have enough time to like marinate on on you know those lessons and then I have a read aloud section because I like to make sure that we're reading something every day. And then my kids pretty much do arts and crafts on the daily, whether it's like an official school day or not. So I figured I want to start keeping track of, you know, what they're messing with. And then extracurricular activities, I make a section for that. So I have a kid in ballet and then one that's in like a robotics club. 
So I want to keep track of that. And then I have a free work section. And this is kind of just my take on that really popular morning basket idea. Um, homeschooling families um, basically take a basket and fill it full of mostly books, but maybe some other activities. And I have one for my kids, which includes books. And I have specific worksheets I've pulled out for each child that they can work on independently. They don't really need my help. It just kind of reinforces things that they have already learned. Um, and so I've got some flashcards in there, a bunch of different dry erase activities. So they can just kind of dig in there all day. Um, and so because they can do this stuff independently, I'm not always like hovering over them whenever they're doing activities from that basket. So whenever I do catch them doing stuff, I'll try to write down whatever I know that they're working on. Um, so I'll just kind of keep track of that as well. So this is the kind of layout I have come to at this point. So I fully expect this to change. I am not mad that I'm not using the monthly or the weeklies at this point. One of the things that I have kind of gathered from just other more veteran homeschooling parents is that things change a lot. Your children's needs change, your family's needs change. Um, and part of the great thing about homeschooling is that you can be flexible. You can do whatever you want in the best way for you. So what I realized was that my real concern for finding like a planning system, my concern was actually finding the right planner and not the right planning style. So I have the flexibility to change my planning style as much as I want without having to fret about changing my whole setup you know, trying to find another insert and worrying that I'm just adding too many inserts and now my system is bulky. Um, everything that I need is in this Hobonichi Cousin Avec. So if in two or three months I decide, oh my gosh, I really need a monthly spread, it's already here. So I can just go back over here and start using it right and same thing with the weeklies if I decide that I really wish I had some weeklies then they're here so I am not worried about filling up every page using every week and just you know maximizing every page out of this I want this planner to work for me so it's got everything that I need for whenever I decide I need it and that was my biggest takeaway in the first month, you know, that we have started homeschooling. This, this is what I really need. And I'm actually so happy with what this system offers that I'm going to go ahead and get the 2019 uh, Hobonichi Cousin Avec, you know, for next year. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get that because I don't have to stick with a certain way of planning in this. And that makes me so happy. It makes me feel really content and calm and that um, this is all I need and I just don't have to worry about getting another planner. So that's where I am at the moment. You know, I'm still keeping an open mind and, you know, as my children's needs change, I will just reevaluate. But I do foresee this being uh, a good fit for me for a long time. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I let, you know, give me your feedback, right? Let me know what you think. My kids are like elementary grade, so things are pretty easy right now. Um, but yeah, just uh, give me your thoughts, ideas, suggestions, and thank you so much for watching. I really hope to see you again soon. Bye.